afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're out here along the Yellow River, uh, also known as 10 Mile Road through the DNR property. And uh, we're going to be working on this spillway behind us here. So this is a concrete drive over spillway. And the idea of this is when the river comes up above flood stage, it flows through here goes over the concrete and goes out into the holding area of the wetlands of the DNR ground here. So this acts as a way to keep it uh, somewhat controlled so we don't have a ton of erosion all at once. So as you can see out here, this used to be empty. Uh, when we're done here, this will be tapered back on this side. That'll be tapered back on that side. We'll be removing it uh, approximately 2,500 yards of uh, sand and sediment, and you'll be able to see the river through here. Uh, we've got approximately 18 trees that we got to take out, and we have to haul them to a designated area. And then we will load out the sand and sediment, and we will haul that off. And then when all said and done, we're going to come and we're going to dress these sides back, and we will rearmor this side. Uh, that side we're not worried about because the water comes down the river from upstream and it'll it swirls in here so this side has got to be armored so uh, we got the hx 220 honda here on site we've got the 200 Hitachi here on site and uh tool truck and some chainsaws so dad strength and i are going to get started and uh see if we can get some trees out today and then uh, over the course of the next couple days we'll start hauling some sediment out and get rid of that. So let's get started. It's gonna be a fun project. Let's let's uh, try out the HX220 Honda from Harding's Heavy Equipment in Lowell and uh, see what she can do out here in the wilderness. We'll be able to take some trees out with it. So what's really interesting about this is this sand came in with the water as the water flowed over the spillway. Um, it actually deposited itself and fell out uh, before it went across here. So it's amazing how much uh, sand water can actually move. So if we go over here, I'll show you. Let me get over here and I'll show you the river. So here's the river right now. So basically we'll start at the water's edge and we'll bring the grade all the way back to the base of the spillway so all this material through here and trees will be all gone and it'll be a nice flat bottom spillway now there is some riprap buried in here somewhere along the base of the uh, spillway we got to locate that we can't go any deeper than that so we'll find out when we get to that point okay so we're going to start taking some of these smaller trees out here Dad strength's around at 200. I know I said that it's got hydraulic pump issues, but uh, for plucking trees, it's all right. Um, it just gets a little warm when you're trying to dig really hard dirt like we were in that pond. So we're working on finding a uh, hydraulic pump for it right now. We are in the process. Uh, we're gonna see if we can come up with one like we did to 270, which was just a, one from a dismantling yard. So the reason we kind of brought it also was because the uh, 220 doesn't have a thumb or grapples, and uh, we're gonna have to load this stuff out into the haul truck to uh, get it hauled to the designated area. So it'll be fine for that. It'll hang together. Just, these spade teeth just are not the best teeth for uh, clearing trees, but they'll work for now. It's definitely one thing if I end up with this machine, I will buy a set of grapples or set it up with a nice Rockland hydraulic foam like the one Dirt, Dirt Perfect's got on that 210 that he's got. That strength can break through that a little bit. Get 
that little scrub stuff out. And then we'll start with the big trees. So I'll get some video later on when we're taking out some of the bigger trees. Okay, so what we want to do here is we actually want to drag some of this sediment around so we have a nice level place to work off of. So I'm just getting some of these piles and throwing them down in the lower holes just so we can travel around easier down here. Uh, a viewer asked me what one of my favorite parts of this Hyundai excavator is and I would have to go with one of my real favorite parts about it is the travel road. Um, this thing turns effortlessly, uh, it tracks smooth and fast and even in the high side of the travel it uh, has plenty of power uh, to turn. I mean I'm, I'm very impressed with that. So that's one of my favorite things about it. <clears throat> and uh, another viewer asked me about fuel consumption. Um, so far, it seems to be really good on fuel. I haven't put pen to paper to see exactly, to actually calculate it. But uh, fuel-wise, it seems to be really good. So this morning was the first time that I've fueled it since we've had it. So uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. is nice for when you're working around trees like this. You can see how close your counterweight is to the tree. You're not scuffing the weight. That'd give me a nice place to sit right there. Okay, starting some big trees. Well, we got some good sized birch trees here. You'll have to excuse my, uh, my voice. I kind of got a little sick over the weekend. Um, I don't know, I got some sort of head cold or something like that. So I'm really uh, congested, congested. So I apologize if some of my words don't come out very clear. These birch trees have quite the root mass, especially being out here where they got plenty of water. easier for uh, hauling later. Get that up to where we get it. Get it cut up with chainsaw. the truck and start cutting well we got a good start but now we have to uh, go pull a sprayer out that's stuck so we'll have to come back to this later this afternoon
Well, we're back at it this morning on the river project. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the little sprayer clip I threw in there. Uh, I figure might as well, we're going, might as well make a video. So uh, we got a good start this morning. We're uh, getting these trees out, we're cutting them up, and then Dad's hauling them to the designated spot with the dump truck. Uh, we're using our regular highway dump truck because it's just a little quicker and the air works in it, so it's not such a dirty ride on these dusty levees. Is that haul truck, the problem with it is, is when the doors open up, um, it kind of churns dust between the, the bed and the wheels and it blows it right in the cab. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. You get really dirty and it don't have air so you can't close the cab up. So uh, when you watch my video when I'm taking this tree out over here, uh, you'll notice that I'm kind of throwing the, the sand pretty far away from the hole uh, where I'm digging the stump out. I don't normally do that. The reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to work all the sand towards the spillway where we're going to load it out. So uh, all this is getting dug out anyway, so if I can make a few motions of throwing dirt that away, I can make every motion count a little more. So excuse my voice, I'm still sick. Uh, hit me pretty hard last night. I got home and whew, I had to go sleep. I went to bed at like 6.30 last night. I was just beat. So uh, I am feeling a little better today, but the voice still quite isn't good yet. So, okay, we're going to keep taking trees out and get this finished up. Okay, so we've got all the trees taken out, as you can see. They're all out. Dad Strength's finishing up hauling some stuff. Uh, we've still got a pile of stumps we got to get rid of. We'll load them up tomorrow and get rid of them. But we got enough room that I can start digging. So I'm going to start digging this uh, spillway out here. It's going to basically go to the water's edge and just uh, start peeling the dirt back. Now it's full of roots and stuff, which doesn't matter because where it's going, it don't matter. This dirt will just be piled up and it'll be used for something eventually, you know, to fill maybe a washout or something like that in. It's not like it's going for uh, a house to be built on or something. So the roots aren't going to hurt anything. They'll rot away over time. So I actually moved quite a bit of dirt just digging stumps out. I mean, I lowered this whole side like three feet by just digging the stumps out and throwing the dirt over as I went. So that made a difference, you know, making every motion count to get the dirt out. So what we'll do is we'll make a whole windrow of dirt and then I'll get up on it and drag it over and then I'll sit on it and load the trucks off the pile so I can be above the trucks. We'll, we'll park the trucks on the spillway and then they can pull right up alongside of me and I'll just load them over the side. The problem with working on these river le levees and spillways is there's just not much room to work. You know, they're, they're not very wide. So there's the original bottom to the spillway. You can see the black in it. So that's all the deeper we're gonna go. So the brush and stuff, we took over to the dump site and piled it, and that's gonna end up being like uh, fox and, and rabbit. Uh, habitat is the way the DNR looks at it. I don't want to get too deep, but yet I don't want to. I don't want it too shallow. There's no records of actually how deep this was originally dug. Would be kind of nice, but there's no records of it, so I think it just kind of went above the water and called it good. So the idea of this spillway is uh, when the water 
uh, from the counties upstream, when it comes rushing down when we have a huge rain, this spillway allows it to go into the DNR property so that it takes pressure off of the levee system. So it, it actually, it keeps things from actually washing out uh, up and down the river where we don't want it to. We've got a very interesting river system through here. Uh, that's, that's kind of a video in itself. <coughs> Sometime I'll have to do a video on how the Kankakee River and the Yellow River meet and how the this area through here works. A lot of people just think this is like a nature preserve. This is actually a, it's a, serves as two purposes. It's a area for uh, surge water to go and it's an area for wildlife. And these spillways and water control structures allow all that to happen. So it helps alleviate stress on the levees. Okay, I'm gonna keep digging. Well, it's Friday morning. We're working on getting rid of these stumps. We've only got about a load left to load, maybe two loads. It's kind of tricky getting them in the truck without destroying the truck. sure don't get very many per load. showed up so it is in our possession now I don't know if we'll bring it to this job or not we'll see but we do have it it's sitting at the shop I, I haven't even played with it yet you know I'm sick when we get a new piece of equipment and I don't even touch it <laughs> the stumps out of the way and stuff I was able to start digging again and uh, I got a pretty good sized dent in it now so what I'm doing is I'm moving all the dirt as close to the spillway as I possibly can so that I can set up on top of the pile and load the trucks uh, we got to keep the trucks on the spillway because this soft sand is so soft that if they would back in here they'd end up stuck so just worth the time and the extra handling of the dirt to move it over and uh, make it so the trucks don't have to back off in here because then you end up with twisted drive shafts and everything else and we don't want to tear trucks up we just want stuff to go smoothly so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up down there on the tripod and get some video since I can't talk very good so uh, let me grab the tripod and I'll get it down there
Okay, so our first load of riprap has come. We're gonna get it dumped here. We're gonna start going this way with it, and then we are gonna put some down the base of the spillway. So Matt's gonna dump this, and I'm gonna reload him with some sand, and he'll go get me another one. So we're going to redo the riprap along the bottom of the spillway here. There is some here, but it's not very thick. We're going to peel it out and we're going to add some new. We're going to go about two foot deep, five foot wide. Bucket teeth work really good for this. Give us a nice flat bottom to our trench here. I'm actually going to uh, be making a phone call. Uh, Dirt Perfect wants me to call him and talk to him about the 220. He wants my thoughts on it. So I'm gonna be calling him. I told him that uh, I'd call him when my voice got a little better because I was pretty sick over the weekend. As you'll see earlier in the video, I was my voice was pretty rough. So I'm gonna give him a call here in the next couple days and give him my thoughts on the 220. Because I think he's on the fence about buying a 220 or sticking with the 210. And really, I think the only price difference between a 210 and a 220 is like $10,000. So, I mean, you know, another 10 grand wouldn't be too bad to get you a little bit bigger hoe. So, talk to him for a while. I got some questions for him anyways on some other things. Thought it was pretty cool that he reached out to me and uh, gave me his uh, email. And I was able to contact him that way and got a phone number. So I'm looking forward to giving them a call. We're going to leave that right there. Looks like some old chunks of concrete also. We'll use that stuff on the uh, the banks of the uh, spillway here. So earlier in the video, there's going to be some video that you see where I don't talk. That's because my voice just wasn't there. I mean, I was I just couldn't talk real good. <coughs> I'm getting better though. At least this machine's comfortable to run even when you're sick. I will give it that. wondering why I'm not having a truck dump yet because I'm gonna let him dump over the side and it'll run down in here we've got them all day anyways so it's not like we're holding them up it's 
all materials are on site already, so it's not like they got to run back and forth to the pit to get limestone. All right, I'm going to keep carving this out, and I'll get some video when we get the stone back in. Well, we're going to start putting this some riprap in. Just going to drag it down, let it slide. Probably going to have to go get the bobcat. worried about dirt in it it's no big deal they want this stuff to look natural when it's placed so like I've said before we want we want stuff to grow in it all right so we're back from lunch we're getting the rest of our riprap placed looks real good so far have dad pushed me some in with bobcat the new Bobcat is here, by the way, the T870, but we didn't want to bring it out here and get it all muddy and get it all beat up with riprap already, so we're going to save it for a little bit. Should give me enough to finish. this whole bank over here. Dad's been carrying some in the bobcat dumping it. As you can see we're getting pretty we're getting down to the uh, pretty wet stuff. We're at about the same level as the water.
looks like we're gonna have to haul a couple more loads of ripper up in. We kind of figured we would have to. No big deal. Left me a pocket there that I can dip out of to get the uh, riprap dipped up. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit across the top here. Oh yeah, much better. That'll meet up with that line coming across there. I'll tell you what, this hose got some tracking power, that's for sure. I mean, I'm in the mud, and I'm in high, and she's cruising right along. Doesn't even hesitate. to get in that new T870 and play with it. <coughs> I'm uh, gonna look into getting a remote control for it so I can run it like a big RC car. So uh, it, is, it is capable of doing it. You just gotta get the control module for it. And there's a few other things. There's a, a safety light that goes on it that flashes when it's in remote control mode. And I gotta get the remote control for it. Uh, they say you can run them with your phone, but all the guys that run them with their phone really don't like the controls because they said it, it won't like combine functions when it's uh, hooked to your phone. So it's like one control at a time, and if you get a phone call, it disconnects, you gotta reconnect it. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go ahead and get the remote for it. I think it'd be really cool. Okay, so we're gonna get a few more loads and then we'll get her finished up here. So I'm just patting in what I do have here. Turned out real nice, I like it. Need to get a little more, I wanna bring a little more around the back side of here. Um, just so that don't wash out. Well, there we go. It's all finished up. We got the spillway all cleaned back off. Scraped it the best we could with the Bobcat in the bucket, and then I scraped the, the taper the best I could with the bucket on the 220. Uh, I was going to get some water and rinse it off like I usually do, but I didn't want to track back and forth to the river and uh, mud all that up really bad. So as you can see, it's pretty wet out there, so Dad Strength's doing the best he can with it. It really don't matter. I mean, it's not going to be anything. There's nothing going to be done with it. Uh, it'll just grow back to natural vegetation, probably some grasses and things like that. Um, the river at, is actually down 10% from what it usually is. So when the river does come back up, this will probably get some water in it. But uh, so it's no big deal that it's a little muddy right now and rough. But uh, what we want it to look good looks good the riprap turned out fantastic i got it padded in i did go around the cur or the corner down there about 12 feet that away down the riverbank 
and then I put a little on the tip over there just for some reinforcement but uh, this this looks really good I turned out nice I had a vision in my head when I first done it or first started it, it I carved it out to the way that I wanted it and then dad strength uh, shaped it made it exactly the way I wanted it and then we got her rip wrap so happy with it so we are done with this project are we done with this yep. okay he says we're done so we're officially done so uh anyways thank you for watching greatly appreciate it and thank you uh dave from harding's heavy equipment and harding's heavy equipment for getting us to 220 to try and thank you honda for uh letting us try it also so really liking the machine really wanting to keep it around so uh, we'll see what happens. But anyways, thank you for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.